Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Okay, that was the practice. For those that don't know the words, I say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. You respond, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, a very warm welcome to our 11 o'clock service and happy Easter to each and every one of you. Welcome, particularly if you're new or you're visiting or you're here with family or friends. It's really lovely to have you with us this morning. My name's Ben. I'm part of the team here, and it's my honor to lead us through our Easter Day service. Um, Just to say, we reconvene this evening at 6.30 for any who want to come along to that service of praise. And we've also got some baptisms, which is why you'll see the large font behind me. Um, And so do come along at 6.30. Well, as it says on our Easter leaflet, uh, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. That's why we're here to celebrate. So if you're willing and able, would you stand with me? Our gracious Father, we thank you so much for the good news of Easter, that Jesus is alive, that sins are forgiven, that death is defeated, and that all are welcomed into eternity who choose to follow in Jesus' tracks. And so, Lord, as we go through this service, as we remember our sin before you and we receive the forgiveness that's offered and we praise you for the resurrection, might the same power that raised Jesus from the dead be at work in us today. Receive our praise and worship, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Please be seated as we come to our confession. The words will be on the screen. Um, I'll say the lighter type if you uh, respond in the bold type. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your Son. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins and open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the church family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance to the scriptures. He was buried and was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles, this we have received, and this we believe. Amen. We come to our time of prayers, um, and I think there's someone to lead us in prayer, but I don't know who it is. It's Ian. Ian, let's pray, and Ian will come and lead us. Let us pray. Dear God, we praise you for this wonderful Easter day when we especially acknowledge that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and that he was raised again on the third day and appeared to his disciples. We thank you that because of this, we can receive eternal life. We pray for our leaders here at St. George's, for Martin, Ben, Lorraine, and our youth workers, Lord. Anoint them through your Holy Spirit so that they may preach your word faithfully and proclaim the good news of the gospel. We pray for St. George, for St. Anne's Grantham for continued growth and for those members of the congregation suffering through spiritual warfare. We pray for St. John Spalding for new staff settling in well and making a difference, and for the Lord to keep adding to their number those being saved. We thank you, Lord, for the recent St. George's Alpha course. We thank you for those who have already put their faith in Jesus and pray with all our hearts that those still hoping to put their trust in you will find faith. We pray for our bishops in the Church of England. We pray that they will trust in the truth of your word and will not be afraid to profess it. We thank you for the walk of witness on Good Friday and pray that those who watched and listened would be open to your gospel. We pray now for those suffering in body, mind or spirit. We remember those known only to us who need your healing comfort and assurance today as we name them quietly in our hearts.
heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we pray for peace in Ukraine, Gaza, and Sudan. We pray for the needs of those suffering through bereavement, separation, and physical injury. We pray for dialogue between nations and a willingness to negotiate an end to the violence. We pray for Fresh Hope Ministry, for the Fresh Hope Ministry and CAP here at St. George's. We pray for respect for those in need. And we pray that through CAP, Friday Connect, Hope House, SHEP, Safe Families, New Beginnings, and the work of our befriending teams, we may serve those who are struggling. We pray that you would lead the right person to fill the vacancies currently at Ryle, Essendine, and Carby, and also in Ketton as well, Lord. We also pray for our world mission partners. We pray for Kazizi Hospital, that it continues to offer holistic health care, which always points to the love, compassion, healing, and salvation that Jesus offers. We pray for Tear Fund, working in the Karamoja region of Uganda. We pray for enough rain for the crops. We pray for fam that families are able to feed their children and the elderly. We pray that people will be able to access all the resources they require. And we pray for a transformation in their hearts and minds towards you, Lord. And lastly, we pray for those making a statement of faith by being baptized at the service this evening. We thank you for all that, for their new lives in Christ, Lord. Thank you. We offer these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together. Down from glory to 
For 
sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing Please take your seats and grab one of these blue Bibles as you sit down and turn to John chapter 20. You'll find it on page 1089, 1089. And again, I don't know who's reading, but I'm sure someone is. Ah, thanks, Anne. Let's read together. John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still didn't understand from scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels, two angels in white, seated where Jesus had been, had been, sorry, that's where Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Well, 
happy Easter, everyone. Let's pray as we come to think about the resurrection of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Easter Sunday that Jesus is alive, and we pray that you would bless our thinking and listening and reflection as we think again about the resurrection of Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, you're going to see a slide in a moment, because I saw this earlier in the week on um, on the internet. I was thinking about, what am I going to talk about? Obviously, I'm going to talk about the resurrection on, uh, on Easter Sunday, but I was thinking, what am I, what's the theme I'm going to have this week? And I, I, I discovered the Evening Standard did a piece on Iceland, you know, Iceland the supermarket, because Iceland the supermarket came up with a new hot cross bun, and you'll see a picture of it on the screen in a moment. And the new hot cross bun is actually a hot tick bun. Instead of a cross, it has a tick like that, you see. And I thought, hmm. I thought, I thought, what am I going to do? I could actually use this on Easter Sunday. So Ben and I went up to Lincoln to a cathedral service with the bishop and so on on Tuesday. And I thought, I googled Iceland. There's not an Iceland in Stamford. There's Iceland in Peterborough, but I wasn't going to Peterborough. As I was going to go to Lincoln, I thought, I'll pop into the nearest Iceland and I'm going to get myself a hot tick bun. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I did, and I, I drove in, I parked my car, I went in, and I looked around, I couldn't see it anywhere, and I said to one of the assistants, um, have you heard anything about these hot tick buns in Iceland I'm looking for? And she said, scratched her head, said, I don't know what you're talking about, I've got no idea. The hot cross buns are on the other side of the counter, so I went round to the other side of the counter, of course, they were the hot cross buns, all wrapped up. And I thought, oh, she's, and, and, and I said, can I speak to your manager? So I, I spoke to the manager, and the manager said, don't know what you're talking about. You could ring, you could ring like the, the wholesaler down on Tritton Road. He may have some. So I rang Tritton Road and said, hello. And they said, hello, it's Iceland here. And I said, have you got any of these hot tick buns? Don't know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't seen, I haven't got any of those. Um, so I scratched my head and then I'm starting to think, this is a marketing ploy. <laughs> and lo and behold, then I read some more articles later in the week um, of the very clever to marketing that Iceland have done because they're wanting conservative type people to nibble and create a huge fuss which of course they duly do disgusted of Stamford or disgusted of Tunbridge Wells right and say how dare you change the hot cross money into a hot tick bun what do you think this is all about you see and of course the Iceland um, attendance or people going to Iceland went up by 113% it was a very successful marketing technique so don't believe everything you read in the newspapers okay But I thought the hot tick bun, I'm going to come back to it later because the hot tick bun is actually very useful for Easter Sunday. But I've got some other buns here. I do have, I do have real hot cross buns here. Look, look at this juicy hot cross bun. Who had a hot cross bun on Friday? Raise your hand. Who had one on Saturday? Raise your hand. Who had one on today already? Yeah, so people are hot cross bun crazy. And the reason why, of course we have a hot cross bun at Easter, is because it reminds us that Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday so that we could be forgiven and set free. So there's a very good reason for hot cross buns. We reflect that Jesus loves me. You might want to turn it that side, a kiss. Jesus loves me and he died for me to forgive me for all the wrong things that I have done. So a hot cross bun is useful for It's very tasty as well for Good Friday. And so we want to say thank you to Jesus for dying for us on the cross. Now, I also have some other bits of bread here. I've got a brown bap. And this brown bap represents the stone that was rolled away from the tomb. Because, you see, as they came to the tomb, the women were, if you read the other Gospels, Mark's Gospel and so on, who's going to move the stone away for us? Who's going to help us dress the body of Jesus? Because he was buried in a hurry because it was the Sabbath. Who's going to help us do that? But, of course, in John's Gospel, when they get there, Mary sees the stone has been rolled away. And she kind of goes, oh, no, somebody's stolen the body of Jesus. They've moved the body of Jesus. And so she runs back to the disciples and says, they've taken the body of Jesus. Where have they put him? And so what Peter and John do, they run as fast as they can, and they get to the tomb, the place where Jesus was buried. And because the stone is rolled away, of course, they can look inside. The stone is rolled away not to let the body of Jesus out, not to let Jesus out, but to let the world look in and see that he's not there. 
It's an empty tomb. And John's got there first. He was probably younger. He's looking in. Peter goes headlong. He goes straight in. And it recorded there that the grave clothes of Jesus had like just dropped back down onto the slab where he'd buried, as though his body had come up through them and they just dropped down and the headpiece was just on its own separately. Because the stone is rolled away, we can look in and we can see the body of Jesus is not here. He's been raised from the dead. And it says of John in our reading, John says, he saw, the, the younger man, he saw and he believed. The empty tomb was evidence enough for him based on his knowledge of who Jesus is and what Jesus had done and his relationship with Jesus that Jesus had risen from the dead. So this bap reminds us that the stone is rolled away, that Jesus has risen from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Exactly. Now, Let's come back to our tick bun. So can I have my tick bun back? You can leave the tick bun up now. Because how is the tick bun relevant to Easter Sunday? And it's simply this. You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the resurrection is God's yes to Jesus. It's his well done to Jesus. Let me explain. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus Christ coming into the world as a baby, what we call the incarnation. Jesus taking on human flesh, becoming like us. Tick. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan as Jesus associates with us in our sinfulness. This is my son, with him I am well pleased. Tick. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus who, obedient to the Father, went all the way to dying on a cross and said, it is finished. The work is done. Tick. The resurrection is God's yes to Jesus to say, this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God with power. Romans 1 verse 5 proved to be the Son of God with power by his resurrection from the dead. The resurrection shows us that Jesus is Lord. Tick. In fact, every knee will bow before him. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I think the tick buns have got a future if we eat them on Easter Sunday. It's an affirmation of Jesus Christ and who he is. Now, uh, you've now got a gospel presentation that you can share with absolutely anybody. All you need is a hot cross bun, a bap, and a hot tick bun. Okay, (laughs) or a picture of a hot tick bun. Just bring it up. Okay, there you go, gospel presentation. So how does that apply to us today on Easter Sunday? First of all, as we take the hot cross bun, we want to say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross and forgiving me for all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. And maybe somebody today, that's the first time you've realized that's what Jesus was doing on the cross, dying for me, dying for the whole world. And you know, it's personal, So when we look at this, the stone was rolled away. And the resurrection isn't just Jesus defeating death for the whole world. It's personal. Did you notice when Mary met him at the tomb, she doesn't recognize him. She thinks he's the gardener. And then Jesus says to her, Mary, and she realizes it's Jesus. You see, the resurrection is personal. We can know Jesus personally. Mary Realized she wanted to hold on to Jesus. She didn't want to let him go because he was so precious to her. So the resurrection, God's, is true and it's personal and it can be true for me and you. We too can meet with Jesus Christ. And finally, the tick bun. It's the resurrection is God's yes to Jesus. He is the Son of God. He has defeated death for us. And like like Mary, again, in the story, what did Mary do in response to the story? She went to tell the brothers, the disciples, the good news. I've seen the Lord, and he told me to tell you this. We, like Mary, become witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. God has given us that message to tell the world. Jesus died for our sins, he's risen from the dead, and he's alive. And he calls us 
to follow him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, on this Easter weekend, on this Easter Sunday, we want to thank you first of all for the cross, that Jesus loves us, that he died to save us and to forgive us. And we want to say sorry for the wrong things that we have done. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive. That like Peter and John, we can look into the tomb and see the evidence. And for some of us here today, it may be the first time that we've realized or recognized that Jesus is really alive. Like John, he saw and believed. Lord, we want to say with John, we believe in the resurrection. And also on this Easter Sunday, we recognize that Jesus is risen from the dead and you have vindicated him. You have given him your tick. You have said yes to Jesus. And he is the son of God with all power and authority. And we bow our knees to him today. And we pray that you would help each of us to be carriers of the good news of the resurrection of Jesus to our families and our immediate circles and to everybody that we meet. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Martin. Not the first gospel presentation made in bread. But now we come to the original as Jesus says, this is how I want you to remember me as we share bread together and share wine together. Um, all are welcome at the Lord's table. So if you know and love the Lord Jesus, you're welcome to receive bread and wine here today. If you're still trying to work out who Jesus is and wouldn't yet call yourself a Christian, then do just stay where you're at and watch what goes on. Or if you want to come forward and keep your hands behind your back, then we could pray a prayer of blessing on you. But if you love the Lord and you want to remember his death for you and his resurrection, then you're welcome to receive. We're an all-age congregation today, so there's lots of children here present, and it's kind of for families together to decide what you do about communion. Uh, If your children want to and you're happy with them receiving communion, we're very relaxed about that. Uh, But likewise, if you want to wait until they get a little bit older, that's fine as well. Just work that out in family groups. So come forward as a family and receive communion together. Or if you keep your hands down by your side or behind your back, then we will just pray a prayer of blessing over you. We've got gluten-free bread and alcohol-free wine that will be served from this front bit here. So if you need those, then you need to make your way down to the front. Now, have a look at the screen, the most confusing map ever created by yours truly. If you are sat over here, starting at the back row, go round this way and round and back to your seat. If you're sat over here, starting at the back row, come round this way and go back to your seat there. There'll be bread and wine just behind the two pillars there. Those in the middle, starting at the back row, come down to the middle, fan out at the front, and then go back round to your seats. Those in the three rows either side, you've got a job to do, which is to watch and see who wins the race. Um, So if this section finishes first, come down the middle and come here. If this section finishes first, go right down that way, just whatever works for you. Does that make sense? Great. From the ridiculous to the sublime, let's take a moment just to be quiet before God, to remember his presence here with us as we prepare to receive bread and wine in remembrance of all that he has done for us. And as I start... I wonder whether Eleanor might find me some purificators. I have none, thank you. Some words are going to appear on the screen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you didn't reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. Thank you so much. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took the bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those who are helping serve could come. Spirit, come. 
conceive in Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Spirit, our God 
So Father, so Father, we thank you so much for feeding us with bread and wine to remind us of the body broken for us, the blood shed for us, and the resurrection won for us, which means that that tick that was given to Jesus is applied to us through all that he's done for us, and we thank you. And Lord, as we finish our time together here now, we pray that the sustenance of this spiritual food that we've received today would give us the, uh, the spiritual fervor to take with us the message of the good news that Jesus is alive to all those that we meet over this season of Easter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and sing a great Easter anthem, Thine Be the Glory. <laughs>
also as we come to the end of our service, church isn't finished today. We've got tea and coffee available at the back. We have prayer ministry at the front, so some people will appear with a red lanyard on. They'd be really pleased to pray with anyone who wants to pray before you go today. Um, but let me take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And so may the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead be at work in your hearts this Easter. And may you go from here with joy, declaring to all that Jesus Christ is alive and that Jesus Christ is Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.